Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2021, and today I want to talk to you about male tenderness. You know, we live in a day and age where men are constantly given the message that they have to be these stoic, stern individuals. You know, they cannot show weakness, they cannot show vulnerability, they have to be these warriors. You know, this cut and dry, you know, and what I'm realizing is that a lot of men nowadays don't know how to really show love. A lot of men don't know how to show tenderness and fellow feeling to one another because they were never given that example. You know, growing up, I never had a male role model in my life to show me what tenderness looked like. You know, I had men who were abusive, men who were very stern and cold and distant. And I never gravitated toward those men because I always felt as though they were unloving and unfeeling. And that just ran contrary to everything that I was and wanted to be in the world. And so I normally found tenderness in the arms of women, you know? And a lot of times I over identified with the female psyche, you know? to the point where I lost my own male identity. You know, my own male identity even now is still in transition trying to find itself and trying to return home to itself. You know, I think we as men are given this, this false message that we always have to be strong and on top of things and know where we're going and we can't ask for help and I think this, this, this definition of masculinity is really toxic. And it's being perpetuated by not only men, but also women. You know, women are out there now thinking that if a man is kind or gentle or understanding or tender with them, that he is gay or that he you know, has, has some, some kind of issue. You know, it's just sad how, you know, people reach into the sexuality and try to emasculate a man, you know, by calling him gay, by calling him, all, it, it's just ridiculous. You know, for one, a man's tenderness has nothing to do with his sexuality, you know, and so we need to really just kind of just abolish that. You know, um, and stop shaming men for being tender and kind and needing that. You know, um, I really think, I really think that we really need to have a bigger conversation on what tenderness is, how to express it as men towards one another. Because it just seems that there's just so much happening, you know. Men are now school to prison pipeline. You know, they don't know how to be kind to one another. They have these false definitions of masculinity that they have to perpetuate and try to figure out alone. Because no man is really teaching them how to do these things. No man is really teaching them how to be tender because they never had a role model growing up. Or what it looks like to be masculine and also tender at the same time. It just seems that we as men are typecast in these roles of being just strict and stern and, you know, just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, you know? And I think to be honest, men are very afraid to express their vulnerability because they're afraid of being taken advantage of. They're afraid of having their sexuality called into question. They're afraid of being emasculated by both men and women. They're afraid to be vulnerable. And we as men need a space to be vulnerable. You know, for men, oftentimes that space has been the barbershop. You know, the barbershop has been a place where you can congregate with other men and really just kind of go into detail about what's really bothering you. You know, but aside from the barbershop and maybe one-on-one -on -one sessions with a counselor or a trusted friend, we really have no space to be vulnerable. And I really think that that's problematic. I think that if this continues, you're going to see a lot of men 
leaving their families, a lot of men engaging in very violent acts, you know, of aggression towards other people, towards men, towards women, towards children. You're going to see a lot of destruction because men are not given that, that space, you know, and also that permission, that permission to really say, look, I know you are a man. I know that there are certain gender roles that you have to navigate as a man and certain beliefs about what masculinity is that you have to negotiate. But in this moment, you are given the space to be. I will listen. I will offer you tenderness. And what is the definition of tenderness? Tenderness is a listening ear, kindness, being understanding, making sure that what they tell you land safely, not on deaf ears, but on active ears that are listening, that are, that are reflecting, you know, and mirroring what it must be like to be a man living in 2021, living in this brave new world we're in, you know, asking them, what is it like for you to live as a man in this day and age? What has that experience been like for you? And really listen and offer, offer just this, this, offer empathy. That's the word. I think tenderness is really empathy in action. You know, tenderness is empathy in action. You understand, you know, you know how hard it is trying to have all these, these things on your back, the weight of the world on your shoulders, you know? having to always live in fight or flight mode, never given the chance to just lay your burdens down, you know, and really just be yourself, to be joyful and happy. Because I think a lot of men struggle to really tap into their joy. They don't even know how to express joy. They're so busy fighting for their lives, they don't really know how to express joy. And I think as men, we really need to do that. We really need to model to our sons, our brothers, our cousins, our nephews, you know? What does it look like for a man to be tender? What does that look like between two men, you know? And it's not about sexuality. It's not about wanting to sleep with men because it's just not. It's about just trying to get that fellow feeling you know, and to be honest, I think a lot of men who supposedly identify as gay, they're not so much gay. They're not gay. They just basically are seeking tenderness from a man. They're seeking that masculine energy that they never received growing up, you know. And like I said, I know how that must be. Growing up, I didn't have a father figure. I didn't have any men in my life who modeled what tenderness was, what that looked like. As I mentioned previously, the men in my life were so abusive. I didn't want to have anything to do with that. You know, and I think that it's really, really, really important to just, you know, just to model you know, what tenderness is, you know, really be there because, uh, you know, and fathers, if you're out there listening, please, you are the first relationship your son will have with a man. You are that first relationship. Please be present. Please be available for your son, you know, because you can make the difference. You may not be able to affect change in, in the whole entire world, but within your home, you can affect change. Be there. Offer that tenderness. This is Lewis Speaks, wishing everybody a wonderful day. Peace.